Okay, so this is going to be a follow-up to the previous lecture, and we're going to talk about two special kinds of linear transformations, one-to-one -one transformations and onto transformations. Um, so, um, in fact, uh, we're, we don't have to restrict this to linear transformations. So these concepts actually exist for all functions. Um, but uh, let's say a function from rm to rn is called okay so let's do onto first so we call it onto if um, basically for every vector in the codomain so for every vector in um, in rn in this example so I'll say y n R n, what can we say? Um, it sort of gets hit by some vector in R m. So there, there is at least one vector um, x in the domain such that x maps to y. Okay. So maybe if I had to phrase this a little more colloquially, I would say, um, you know, everything, everything in the codomain gets hit. Okay. So everything is the image of some vector in the domain. So that's what it means to be onto. What does it mean to be one-to-one? -one? So a function from Rm to Rn is called one-to-one -one if it's gonna be a very similar sounding definition. But this time, so again, we have for every vector in the codomain, what do you think I'm gonna write here? So here it was at least one vector. Here I'm going to write at most one. It's at most one vector in the domain that maps to your vector y. Okay. So we'll. How can we rephrase this? So basically nothing gets hit more than once. Okay. Okay, and these are two very important uh, concepts for functions in general. Um, in fact, uh, these have other names. So you might have seen these other names before. So onto is also known as surjective. And one-to-one -one is also called injective. I'm not going to use these words, though, so I'm just going to call them onto or one-to-one -one because, first of all, I think it's easier to um, distinguish between these two. I know the first time I learned surjective and injective, I always got confused. I always uh, was, was, uh, I was always mixing them up. Okay, so we're going to call them onto and one-to-one. -one. So let's draw some pictures of you know, onto or one-to-one -one functions. So maybe let's draw a little grid here. Okay. And so we're gonna try to we're gonna try to draw every combination of these two properties. Okay, and we're gonna see that it's possible actually to get any combination. So here we'll have one to one, and over here we'll have not one to one. And over here we'll have onto, and down here we'll have not onto. Okay, so can we draw every single one of these situations? Well, let's try it. So, what would it look to if I was onto and one to one? Well, let's say I have, uh, let's say I have two dots there and two dots there. This one's going to that one, and that one's going to that one. Okay, so everything over here gets hit, 
but nothing gets hit more than once. So everything gets hit exactly once if we're onto and one to one. Okay, let's say we're onto, but we're not one to one. So everything needs to get hit, but something's going to get hit more than once. So maybe I'll draw three dots over here. Maybe both of these are going to that one. And then this one's going to that one. It has to be going to that one because we're onto, right? But we're not one to one. Um, okay, let's do not onto, but we will be one to one. So in this picture, maybe I'll draw two dots over here and three dots over here. And one of these is not going to get hit, but I need to be one to one. So this one needs to go to that one. This one cannot go to that one. It would have to go to this one. But notice I'm not onto. This one does not get hit by anything. Okay, there's no vector such that you know this is in the image of the vector here. Um, and let's draw not onto, not one to one. Well, I suppose the simplest one would be two dots here, two dots here. But I'm going to draw both of the arrows going to this dot here. Okay, so it's not one to one. Okay, because this one gets hit more than once. Okay. Um, there is not at most one vector, right? Such that um, that 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 maps to uh, to this vector. There are two vectors that map to this vector. And this one doesn't get hit at all. Okay, so it's not onto. Okay, great. So these are the pictures for all the four possible situations we can have. So again, a function can be onto, it could be one to one, it could be both, it could be neither. So we have all the possibilities. Okay, let's talk about linear transformations now. So um, let's just recall. What did we learn about linear transformations? Um, well, I'm not going to recall the whole definition, but I'm just going to say um, one of the most important things from the previous lecture was we learned that any linear transformation, any linear transformation, um, let's say t from rm to rn, okay, it doesn't have to be the same space. It could be two different spaces. Um, it can be written in a matrix form, right? so it can be written. in the form um, t of some vector, let's call that x, vector x, is, I can write it as a matrix times that vector, right? Um, and how do I do that? Let's just recall how that works. So what is this matrix A? Where is it coming from? The columns of A, remember, are yeah, what are the columns of A? Okay, so what are these columns? Well, they're the image of the standard basis vectors, right? So I look at where my vector 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 goes to. I put that in this first column. Then this one is the image of uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I put that in a second column. And finally, the image of my, um, ah, what should I write here? Should I write M or N? So I'm going from RM to RN. These vectors have n components, uh, and there are m of them, right? Because I'm multiplying this by a vector of length m, right? And those are the coefficients. Um, so this will be uh, t of e m, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. I look at where that vector gets sent under my linear transformation. Okay, so that's the matrix associated to the linear transformation. Um, okay. What can we say now? So um, let's call this a theorem, actually. How can we tell when a linear transformation is going to be one to one or onto? So um, let's start with onto. So T is onto. What does that mean? So how can we rephrase that in terms of this matrix? Well, let's recall the definition of onto. It means that for every vector in the in the codomain, I can find at least one vector such that in this language, a times x equals my vector in the codomain. Okay, so so this is if and only if t is onto if and only if the equation a x equals b. Let's call it. Um, has 
at least one solution. Okay, so I can hit every vector B, right? So it has a, at least one solution for every B, for every B in Rn. Okay, but this is sounding familiar, right? <laughs> so we've seen this before. What What is this saying right here? The equation Ax equals B has at least one solution. That just means that B is in the span, right? Um, or sorry, it means that if, if this is true for every vector B in Rn, it means that the columns of A span all of Rn, right? So let, let's draw that. So this is another equivalence. So the columns of A, okay, I can get any vector B that I want. So the columns of A span, I can take any linear combination or I can take some linear combination, at least one linear combination, to get any vector b that I want. Okay, so um, the columns are going to span our n. Okay, so we can actually phrase this property of being onto in terms of some things we've already talked about and we've already figured out how to do. Okay, and I'm going to write down a similar statement for one to one. You can probably guess um, what it's going to be. So T is one to one. How can we tell if a transformation is one to one? Well, remember, um, well, actually we don't have to remember. So, so what does one to one mean? Well, it means if we phrase it in terms of this equation, AX equals B. Okay, so I'm gonna take my transformation. It's one to one if for every y and rn, so that's like our b here. So if, for every b, we can get there in at most one way, right? So this, this equation, ax equals b, has at most one solution. Again, this should sound familiar. What is this property that I'm writing down? This equation has at most one solution for every b and rn. Well, you might remember this was one of our equivalent characterizations of linear independence, right? So this is saying the columns of A are linearly independent. Okay. So really these concepts onto one-to-one we can verify these by writing down the matrix of the linear transformation and then just turning it into a problem about span or linear independence, okay? So let's see some examples of that, okay? Um, this, is, this is really a common thing in linear algebra where we learn a new concept and we find out that it's just a new version of the same concept we already studied. Um, so this is a typical example of that. Um, so. Let's do, uh, here's example one. So is the linear transformation, let's do one from the previous lecture. So we've looked at plenty of linear transformations. Um, let's take the one um, where we, we uh, went from R3 to R2. Um, is the linear transformation given by so we sort of squashed all of three-dimensional space just onto two dimensions. So how did that work? I think we took x, y, z. So this is my vector x. And what do we do? We just uh, ignored the z-coordinate. Okay, so is this linear transformation um, one to one? Or is it onto? Or both, or neither? Okay. Well, sometimes you can answer these questions just by looking at this definition, okay? So let's try that. So what would it mean for it to be onto, for example? It would be onto if we could get to any x, y, okay? By choosing some vector here. But you see, we can do that, right? Because we can just take x, y, one, for example, and that will map to x, y. So yes, it's onto. We're gonna see this in terms of the matrix also, but yes, we know it's onto. Is it one-to-one? -one? 
That would mean there's at most one way to get to any vector x, y. But you see, there's not at most one way, right? We could take x, y, 1 or x, y, 2. Those both map to the same vector x, y. So it's not one to one. So this is an example where it's not one to one, but it is onto. What would the matrix of this linear transformation be? Um, so we wrote down last time, it should be one zero. That's where one zero zero gets sent. And then zero one zero gets sent to zero one. And then zero zero one gets sent to just zero zero. So there's my matrix. And can we see from this matrix that it's going to be onto? Okay, do the columns span Rn? Or in other words, is there a pivot in every row, right? That was an equivalent characterization. Uh, yes, there is. And also, yes, we can see that the columns definitely span Rn. Even just the first two columns span Rn. Um, are the columns linearly independent? Ah, they are not linearly independent, right? Because we have the zero vector. Any set containing the zero vector is going to be linearly dependent. Okay, so it's not one-to-one, -one, but it is onto. Okay, so that's an example. Um, here's another example. Let's do um, let's do another one from the previous lecture. So, is the linear transformation um, Okay, so this one will be t of x1, x2 going to negative x2. Remember this one, x1 plus x2, and then 4x1. So how about this one? Is this one one-to-one -one or onto? So is it one-to-one? -one? Is it onto? Hmm. Okay. Well, this one's kind of harder to think through, um, but let's try just writing down the matrix. So, um, what is the matrix of this linear transformation? So T of X1, X2 is going to be some matrix, right? Times X1, X2. What is that matrix? Remember, there are two ways we can do it. Okay, and we did it last time two different ways. The first way is you just look at the coefficients of the x1, and then you look at the coefficients of the x2. So we get 0, 1, 4, and then the coefficients of x2 are going to be negative 1, 1, 0. Okay, you look at it for each of these variables, you look at the coefficients. The other way to do it, remember, the other way to do it is this is where 1, 0 gets sent. And then this one is where zero one gets sent. Okay, so one zero gets sent to zero one four. There it is. Right? And similarly for this one. Okay, so that's my linear transformation. Is it one to one? Is it onto? What we're really asking is are the what about the columns? Do the columns uh, span Rn? Are there are they linearly independent? Okay. So can we, can we just see that from this matrix? Do we have to really go into row, uh, row echelon form in order to see, you know, is there a pivot in every row, pivot in every column? I don't think we do. Because, well, are the columns linearly independent? Yes, right? The columns are linearly independent. Which means what? That means T is, which one should I write? Right, you want to keep track of these. So T, so T is one to one if and only if the columns are linearly independent. Right, so T is one to one. Okay. How did I tell that the columns were linearly independent? It's because I have two vectors, right? And linear, you, uh, Columns are linearly independent if one is not a scalar multiple of the other. And I just looked at them and I saw this one's not a scalar multiple of that one. And vice versa, this one's not a scalar multiple of that one. So columns are linearly independent. Um, do these two columns span R3? 
right? Because that's where we're going. We're going R3, right? This is R2 to R3. So do these columns span R3? Well, no, right? Because two vectors can never span R3. So the columns do not span R3. What does that mean about T? So columns do not span R3. It means that T is not on two. Okay. All right, great. This is so satisfying, right? We're using all of our intuition that we got about span and linear independence uh, to sort of unravel some deep properties of linear transformations. Um, okay, so let's do uh, let's do one other problem. So. Uh, I guess this was an exam another example. So let's do another example. So suppose I have a transformation. And after the previous example, you should be able to answer this one almost immediately. So let's suppose I have any transformation from R2 to R3. Here's my question. Can it be on to? Well, what is the matrix going to look like? It's going to be, it's going to look like this, right? So a matrix from R2 to R3. So, so it's going from R2. That means, here's how I think of it. My vector here is going to have two components, right? So I'm going to need two columns, but then I'm mapping to R3. So these had better have three entries, right? Because I'm essentially taking a linear combination of these columns. Okay. And so I have a matrix that's two columns and three rows that can never be onto, right? Because two vectors in R3 are never going to span, right? So the answer is no. And so in general, there's a general statement we can make. If uh, M is less than N, strictly less than M, then Rm to Rn, a linear transformation from Rm to Rn, is never onto. Okay. And this is kind of a cool fact. Um, so here's one way to think about this, right? So so in this example back here, what we did is we collapsed three-dimensional space down to two dimensions just by ignoring the z-coordinate. Okay. No matter what the z-coordinate was, we just mapped it to x, y, the x and y coordinates. What this uh, is saying right here is that you can't do that in reverse, okay? So <laughs> you can collapse 3D space down into 2D space using a linear transformation, but then you can't uncollapse this plane back into 3D, okay? So that's kind of cool. That's just not possible to do with a linear transformation. Um, and then, you know, we can write a similar statement about um, one-to-one. -one. So also, if, what's that going to be? So if M is, uh, what was this? M is less than N. So if M is uh, greater than N, so if M is greater than N, then a linear transformation from Rm to Rn um, is never one-to-one. -one. Very powerful statements. Right? And why is that? Well, it's because then the matrix will be sort of a, uh, a long one like this. Okay. And these columns are always going to be linearly dependent. Okay. Um, great. Okay. So what should we talk about next? Ah, I know what we can talk about. So, so what about this special case? What if M equals N? What does that mean for us? I.e., right, suppose we have a linear transformation 
from a space to itself. Okay, we saw a few of those last lecture. So we're going from Rn to Rn. Okay, what can we say? Well, um, then T is one to one. What does that mean? T is one to one. That means that the columns of this matrix are going to be linearly independent. Okay, but we have N vectors in Rn that are linearly independent. By our unifying theorem, those columns also have to span Rn. Okay, and if they have to span Rn, that means that T is also onto. Okay, so again, these totally different concepts end, end up being the same concept as long as we have a transformation from Rn to Rn. Okay, so if it's one-to-one, -one, it's automatically onto. If it's not one-to-one, -one, it's not onto either, okay? And so I'd actually like to add this to the unifying theorem. So what I've done is I've actually created a little book here. <laughs> created a book because by the end of this, it might take up a whole book. <laughs> um, because basically every time we learn a new concept, we're gonna find some way to relate it back to this theorem. Um, so let's recall the setup. So we have a set of n vectors in Rn, and we have, we're also defining this matrix just to be, you know, the matrix with the vectors as columns. And we concluded earlier that in this case, when we have n vectors in Rn, span is the same as linear independence. Okay, so these vectors will span Rn if and only if they're linearly independent. And uh, recall the reasoning for that is because span has to do with this equation having at least one solution and linear independence has to do with this equation having at most one solution, okay? So they span and are linearly independent. This will have a unique solution. And remember the way that we linked it up was we just looked at the echelon form of this matrix and we decided if there's a pivot in every row, there has to be a pivot in every column and vice versa. So that was sort of, um, what was going on behind the scenes with this. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we can add some more to this. So here's what I want to add. So I want to also let, we're going we're gonna to define a linear transformation. And what do you think the linear transformation we're going to define is in this setup? So I'm going to let T of X be the linear transformation just defined by you know, multiplication by this matrix. So T of X is going to be A times X, okay? Okay, well, if the columns span Rn, what can we say about the linear transformation? Well, we just saw what we can say, right? We can say this is onto, okay? So this is equivalent to number one. And then if the columns are linearly independent, then we can say T is one to one. And again, because these are all equivalent, these are also equivalent, right? Onto and one to one are the same concept. Okay. Um, great, okay. So we're gonna add more to this in the future. So let's put that aside for now. Um, I just want to do a few quick examples. So how about this one? Let's see how fast we can figure this out. So the linear transformation, I want you to tell me if it's one-to-one, -one, onto, both, or neither. So how about this one? So we're going to go from R2 to R2. So here's my input vector, x, y, and I need a two by two matrix. So two, one, minus four, two, let's say that's our matrix. I'm defining it by the matrix this time, okay? Well, is this one-to-one -one or is this onto? Maybe pause the video and try to think through it for yourself. Okay, um, well, we're going to use, um, we're going to use this, all right, first of all. So 
Can we check to see if the columns span or if the columns are linearly independent? Well, look at this second column. This second column is a multiple of the first column. All right, so this is just a multiple of the first column. What does that mean? So the columns are linearly independent. Oh, sorry, linearly dependent, right? Dependent. So that means it is not, what? What should I write? It is not one to one, right? But this is a two by two matrix, right? This is a transformation from, right? From R2 to R2. By the unifying theorem, if it's, if it's not one to one, it's also not onto, right? Because what does it mean the following are equivalent? It means they're either all true at the same time or they're all false at the same time. Okay, so by the unifying theorem, notice we didn't even, we didn't even have to check anything about span. We're just using the unifying theorem. Um, T is also not onto, right? Okay, very cool. Um, okay, so I want to do one more example. Um, let's do, uh, yeah, let's do this. So this is kind of a cool example. So this is the derivative of a polynomial. You think, well, what, is, what do derivatives have to do with linear transformations? Um, okay. So here's, here's the idea. So to each polynomial, and let's, let's say quadratic polynomials. So we're going to deal with degree two polynomials. So to each quadratic polynomial, let's associate a vector. Okay. And here's how I'm going to do that. So let's say you give me the polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. What vector do you think I'll associate to that? Well, it'll just be the coefficients, a, b, c. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to let t from r3. So I have a vector a, b, c, and let's go to r3. So let this be the transformation. I'm going to write this in kind of a funny way. So T of some polynomial, meaning T of this vector, uh, this vector here is the derivative of the polynomial. So that's how I'm going to define my linear transformation. Well, wait a second. How is this linear? Well, it, it's linear in the same way that differentiation is a linear operator, uh, meaning the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. That was actually our first property of a linear transformation. Um, and if you have the derivative of a constant times a function, that's the same as just the constant times the derivative of the function. So it turns out this is a linear transformation. Can we try to write down its matrix? So how are we going to do that? we need to figure out what T does to the basis, right? The standard basis. So uh, what does T do to this, um, this vector? So, so first of all, what is the polynomial associated with this vector? Well, it's one uh, X squared plus zero X plus zero, right? So it's X squared. What is T going to do to that? <laughs> so here's T. That's gonna turn it into a two X, right? And what vector is associated with 2x? That's uh, 0, 2, 0. Okay. And uh, what else do we need? We need to know where 0, 1, 0 gets sent. And we also need to know where 0, 0, 1 gets sent. So let's just go ahead and write these down. So this one is associated with x. This one is associated with just the number 1, right? What happens when we apply t to these? Okay, so the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. 
one is associated with uh, zero, zero, one, right? Okay. And zero is associated with, it's just zero, zero, zero. Okay. So T sends this vector to that vector, that vector to that vector, that vector to that vector. So we can write down our matrix, right? So T is given by um, multiplication by the matrix. So let's say T of, yeah, um, ABC, what's it going to be? Um, it's going to be, so I put in my first column, the image of one zero zero, which is zero two zero. And I put in my second column, the image of zero one zero, which is zero zero one. And I put in my third column, the image of zero zero one, which is zero zero zero. Okay. So this is pretty cool. So, so what you can do is if you have a polynomial and you multiply by this matrix, let's just do an example for fun. So I'm going to take this matrix, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Let's multiply it by, let's say I want a derivative of five X squared plus three X minus, uh, minus, uh, six. So I put in my five, three, minus six. And then I can calculate what this is going to be. Okay, so my first component, well, what's that gonna be? It's gonna be five times this vector, three times this vector, minus six times this vector, but I have all zeros there. Okay, so that's just gonna be a zero. Then this one's going to be five times a two, uh, plus three times a zero, plus negative six times a zero, so that's 10. Then this one's going to be five times zero, this component here is going to be five times zero plus three times one plus negative six times zero. So I get this vector. So that's telling me that the derivative of this polynomial, I take the derivative, I should get 10 X plus three. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is, right? So this is pretty cool. So you can actually encode differentiation as multiplication by this matrix. Um, what can we say? Is this one-to-one -one or is this onto? Well, no to both, right? <laughs> so this is not one-to-one. -one. Uh, sometimes you just write one-to-one -one like this, one dash one. <laughs> so this is one-to-one. -one. It's not one-to-one. -one. Why is it not one-to-one? -one? Because the columns are clearly linearly dependent, right? I have an all zero column, okay? Um, but it's also a transformation from R3 to R3. So it's not one to one and it's not onto by the unifying theorem. Okay, we can think about what this is saying in terms of differentiation itself. So what does it mean for this not to be different, uh, for differentiation of this quadratic polynomial to not be one to one? Okay, well, it means that there must be several kinds of polynomials that all get mapped to the same thing, right? Okay. So something has to get hit more than once. And that something is, um, for example, is one example, the zero vector. So for example, this is saying that all constants have a derivative of zero, okay? So zero, zero, one gets mapped to zero, but zero, zero, two also gets mapped to zero, right? So that's what it means to not be one-to-one. -one. And what does it mean to not be onto? It means that certain polynomials cannot get hit, right? So certain, pol certain quadratic polynomials are not the derivatives of quadratic polynomials. And I mean, when you think about it, it's just all the quadratic polynomials that cannot be derivatives, right? So we start with a quadratic polynomial and take the derivative we're going to get a linear polynomial. So this is, um, this is just because, uh, um, because um, quadratic polynomials can't be the derivative of quadratic polynomials. You need a cubic polynomial to be able to get a quadratic polynomial as the derivative. Okay. So that's maybe a fun little example, and this is a good place to uh, end this lecture. I'll see you next time.